Hello everyone, we are in the last module of uh, this course on structural vibration. So this is the 12th week and in this week we plan to show you how we solve a structure using some uh, commercially available software. So today we are going to model one structure, one frame structure to be more precise using uh, ANSYS. So what we are going to do is we are going to model a G plus 3 building. As you can see the geometry of the building. So you can see the plan view. Now this is a frame structure and it starts from the foundation level and the depth of the foundation is 1.5 meter. That means from the top of the foundation to the plinth level it is 1.5 meter. And then at that level actually the ground level starts and from there we have a floor height of 3 meter. Now you can see the plan we have uh, different bays shown here and we purposefully select a asymmetric plan building. Now the reason of selecting asymmetric plan building I will come at the end but for the time being what you can see that the distance between two frames are highlighted here. So so you can see from one frame to another frame here in the x direction the distance is 4 meter and in the next bay we have a distance is actually uh, 3.5 meter. Similarly, if we go to the orthogonal direction 2x, it is z here. So we have again, it starts with 4 meter uh, between two frames and then uh, uh, followed by 2.5 meter and then we have different other distances between the frames. And of course, uh, the frame here along this line uh, is repeated four times and then there is a discontinuity and that brings the asymmetry in the plan. Now we have G plus 4 type building and in reality when we construct this properly design this we use different beam sections because for example at the top floor we don't need the section details what we need at the ground floor. Similarly for column sections also we normally use different sections as we go higher and higher. But here in this example, we have uniform beam section and column section throughout the building. Also, we have slabs at different floor level and as you can see, we have 125 millimeter slab thickness. Now, that defines the geometry of the building. Now, we will go for modal analysis we have already defined what is mode and in this case you can easily identify it is a multi degree of freedom system and we are going for discrete modeling right. So using this software what we will do we will develop the mass and stiffness matrix which we will use in our modal analysis as we did in case of um, MDOP system when we discussed the theory. Now once we develop the model then uh, the second task what we have at the output is we will plot the mode shapes and then we will see the impact of asymmetric plan building on the mode shapes. Now that's the elevation as you can see it starts at the bottom where we have foundation. So from foundation to the ground level this is 1.5 meter. At this level where we have ground there is no floor slab but from there we have a floor height of 3 meter. Now from that point onward we have slabs at each floor level and finally in one uh, frame uh, we have a opening throughout the height of the frame or building because it uh, houses the stair and then at the top we have the uh, floor slab for, to cover the stairwell. So that's why we have a 1.5 meter high column at the top 
and then at that level we have a floor slab that covers the stairwell so that forms the geometry of the building now what are the steps we are going to follow we have already defined the geometry that means complete dimensions of the building that we are going to use using this geometry we will first use a preprocessor what we call space claim now in this package we can define the geometry and we can construct the model then once the model is constructed we can import that model in ansys mechanical and then once we import the model in ansys mechanical there we will assign different properties some of the geometric properties for example slab thickness we will assign there and then we will also assign the material property now as i said earlier we are going to use uniform sections and uniform material but in reality when we design a building we can use different types of material at different uh, locations for example you can have a different concrete property for um, column and as you go in other parts of the structure for example slab depending upon the utility you can use different material property however in this analysis we are going to demonstrate using a uniform material property so we will use the inbuilt option in ansys to define the concrete and we will uh, use that throughout the analysis you can change that property according to the designer specification if the need be then once we define the material property we have to do something called meshing that means uh, we will define the elements we use the term finite element that means each and every element has a finite size and that will be defined by this meshing now here again because this course is not on finite element analysis here we just use the concept of finite element to solve the vibration problem so we will not discuss much about meshing or what are the different types of meshing we have uh, what is the convergence and how we actually verify the convergence that we are not going to discuss here what we will do we will use the inbuilt option again the default option in ansys to mesh the structure then once the meshing is done we have to assign the boundary conditions in this case we have foundation at the bottom level that means we have full fixity at the bottom level so we will assign the boundary condition and once we assign the boundary condition the model is ready and then this model we can use for different analysis in this lecture we are going to demonstrate how to do model analysis so once we assign the fixed support at the bottom then we will use the that model for model analysis we will extract some modes and for that you know already the theory we normally use <coughs> what you can recall the mass and stiffness matrix right and using that mass and stiffness matrix we do an eigen analysis and then we solve for eigen values which are nothing but the natural frequencies of the structure here also we do the same thing but again uh, if you recall during i discussed that theory i told you that uh, commercially available softwares they don't do a eigen analysis but numerically find out the uh, eigen values so there are different options we will not go into the details of that those are numerical techniques but ultimate objective is to find out first few natural frequencies and then once we solve the natural frequency then we'll plot the mode shape so that's how the you know a logic goes and with that background let us go to the ansys modeling so step by step we will now demonstrate the ansys modeling so you can see now the ansys workbench is open so what we'll do we'll first open the space claim because as i told you we have to create the geometry it takes some time to open so let us just wait for a while 
till it opens and then uh, we will show you how to create the model okay so this is uh, space claim here we will create the geometry first and then we will also assign some of the sectional properties we will define beam and column here so now we define the xz plane if you recall the reference axis we are using xz y is our vertical plane so accordingly we set the coordinate system so we are now in xy plane so from the bottom that is the foundation level we go 1.5 meter up to the ground level so first column at the bottom level is uh, defined here we just define the geometry we have to define the section also then the next column is 3500 millimeter away similarly another column is 3500 millimeter away so we define the node points where the columns will be created and once we define the nodes at those nodes we define the column that connects the ground level ground floor level with the foundation so one side is created now you can see in 3d view we have one set of columns the columns collecting foundation to the ground floor level for one frame is created along with the beams so what we will do we will assign the beam and column sections here before we copy them to create the complete frame so let us assign uh, beam and column sections and for both of them we have rectangular cross section so we define the rectangular cross section so the dimension of this section for beam is given by 0 0.3 meter by 0 0.35 meter so accordingly we change b and h so b is 0 0.3 meter and h is 0 0.35 meter Okay, one section is defined. Let us assign the section for beams. So we name it beam section. Similarly, we define the column section, which is again a rectangular section. So in a similar way, we define the column section. Again, let us check the dimension. It is 0 0.35 by 0 0.35. So it's a square section. Now the section is defined so we have to assign the section for that we select the columns and then we assign the cross section.
and then we change the name of the section as column section. Once they are defined, then we will uh, copy them because now if we copy beam and column, it will be copied along with the section we used for that particular beam or column. Now, this 3D rendering, it shows actually the sections properly. Using this, you can check whether the orientation of the beam and column is proper or not. We have a square column. So, if we have a rectangular column, then the orientation matters. And then we can change the orientation also after we see the 3D rendering. Okay, so let us continue. Now, what we'll do, we will copy the beam first so we copy them in the vertical direction so the floor height is 3 meter in the y direction we copy it now that creates the beam at the roof level of the ground floor and then what we do we have the nodes so we connect them and uh, we define the columns at the ground floor So you can see we have beams and columns ready up to ground floor level for one frame. Now one frame up to ground floor level is ready. So, we will copy them along the z direction and for that we again go to x z plane and then select the complete set of beams and columns and then we copy dimension is 4 meter along that direction. So, we copy them along z direction. So, we have the complete set ready. So, one more frame is created. Similarly, we will copy the next frame. For that again, we will follow the same procedure. Again, we will select the frame that we have just created and then we will copy it. Now the dimension is 2500 millimeters. So we copy along the z direction. So we have the next frame ready. And then again we will repeat the same procedure. This time the dimension is 3500 millimeter. So, you can see they are now copied. Now, if you see the plan, what you can see we have frame 1 here, then 2, then 3 and then 4 and after that we have the asymmetry in plan. So, again we will copy the frame, but this time we will not select the complete frame, but part of it before we copy for the next two. Um, as you can see on your screen. So, let us complete that procedure. Okay. 
so part of the frame we select and then uh, we copy this time again the distance between two frames is uh, 4 meter so we copy them along z direction and then uh, we select this partly copied frame one more time And this time the dimension is 3400 millimeter or 3.5 meter. So it is now copied. So you can see up to ground floor level uh, frames uh, they are created. Now we will also create the orthogonal frames. For that first we uh, create the beams. So we define the reference plane at 1.5 meter that is the ground level and then we create the beams at that level. Now you can see at the ground level we have the beams ready. We have to define the section also. And then now we can copy this beam along x direction. and repeat the same procedure then uh, we have a asymmetry in plan so what we'll do we'll select this beam and these three and then we'll copy them along x direction Similarly, we will copy one more time and now all the beams at the plinth level is ready. We repeat the same procedure to create the beam at the ground floor level. For that again we select all the beams at the plinth level and then copy them along y direction that is vertical direction and the floor height is 3 meter. So we copy them and now the frame up to ground floor level is ready. Now, we will copy this uh, frame at the ground floor level uh, to create the G plus 3 building but remember at each and every floor level we have slab. So, let us also create the slab first before we copy them to create the floors at the higher level. So, let us first create the slab and uh, at the plinth level there is no slab. So, we will not create any slab at the plinth level. but at the ground floor level we have slabs and for that we need to select the four corners and then fill it and the slab is ready. At this point the thickness of the slab is not defined. 
which we will do once we import this model in ANSYS. Now, you can see one by one we can create the slabs for each panel. So, one by one we create all the slab panels. The procedure is all the same. So, you select all four edges and then fill it with a slab. Now, you can see one panel is left that is the stairwell and we will create one extra story at the top of G plus 3 level and that is the reason uh, one panel is left at this point. Now, what we can do we can copy to create floors at the higher level. So, for that we just select the slabs and then we copy the slabs first and then we will again select the beams and columns. So, you can see in a single click we can create all the floors. So, the slabs are copied now, we again activate the beams and columns. And then at the ground floor level, we will select all the columns and beams and then copy them to complete the structure. So, we first select all the beams and then we have to select the columns. So, you can see all the beams and columns at the ground floor level are selected and then we will copy them in the vertical direction and now uh, they are ready. So, if we again activate all the slabs, now you can see the structure. So, almost done. The only thing is we have to cover the stairwell and for that uh, we again have to select the beams and then copy them. The height of the stairwell above G plus 3 is 
1.5 meter so the beams are copied then we have to develop the columns So we assign the column section and then we are going to copy to create all other corners. Now we select both of them and then copy it again along the orthogonal direction and then So all the corners are ready, we have to define the slab at the top to cover the stairwell. Okay, so the complete frame is now ready, the geometry is ready in space claim. So we are going to import this in ANSYS workbench. But before that, just one quick point. Uh, if you recall, we have uh, created beam and column separately and then we select four corners to create a slab. Now, at present, uh, if we consider any floor level, all the slab panels are independent. But in reality, when we cast the floor concrete, obviously the complete floor um, monolithically acts and that's the reason we have to combine all the beams and uh, slabs at a particular floor level. So we will do that now. So for that what we do, we merge all the elements that we create and there is a tolerance, default tolerance is uh, 0 0.02 millimeter if I am not wrong. But we will use the default tolerance, we can also change it for the timing that is not required. So if you select uh, at each floor level, now you can see we select the complete slab and that tells us whether they are merged or not. So once uh, they are done, if you again try to do it, you will see the error message. Now you can see cannot merge bodies. That means all the bodies which are within the tolerance limit, they are merged. So the model is now ready. So we can select the sections and that actually shows the complete floor is selected. So we save it. And then we have to share the nodes before we import this model in ANSYS workbench. So the edges are automatically detected and then we will uh, create the nodes. Now you can see uh, sh the shared edges and uh, vertices and then it creates the node. You can also see the dots at the connection of beam uh, and column that shows us where the nodes are created.
okay so now we save this model still it is not ready we have to define a few more properties that we will do in ansys workbench so now it is ready we open ansys workbench and here uh, we um, import the model for that we go to the model option and then we import the model it takes a uh, little time so that it can read the complete model from the space claim and then create a model in this ansys workbench let us just wait a while so you can see it copies the complete model and now it appears in ansys workbench so you can see the complete model is ready so the next task is to define the thickness for each floor slab and for that what we do we select the surface we select all of them because in our case we have uniform thickness and then we select the thickness we define the uh, thickness here it is 125 mm Now once the slab thickness is defined we have to define the material property our material is concrete in ansys workbench the default material is steel that we have to change so for that we use the edit option and then uh, we define the concrete so we have a material defined here you can see so the concrete we have to define for each and every material so the concrete is defined now you can see the concrete property uh, if we use a different type of concrete that also we can do we can edit these properties according to our um, material design but for the time being let us use this uh, default uh, properties and using that uh, let us assign them for each and every structural element so we select all of them because we have a single material here so we define concrete and now it is defined for each and every element we also select the slabs we have done it for beams and columns so for slabs again we change from structural steel to concrete okay so now you can see the geometry is defined the complete set of materials in our case we have only one material but all the elements structural elements they have the materials also defined then we have to go for meshing and as i told you earlier we will use the default option uh, we will not go the into the details of this meshing and how we can check the convergence that uh, is a separate issue altogether for the timing uh, we can use the default mesh option and once we select that it will create the mesh now you can see the finite elements are defined uh, you can easily notice at each floor level you can see the beams and columns sorry particularly beams and slabs they are they are sharing the common uh, neutral axis and that's the reason uh, you can see the edges of beams uh, over the slab surface but we can also change that for the time being i leave it as is uh, but uh, those who will uh, go for more complex geometry just remember we can apply a certain eccentricity at each and every floor level and 
we can bring the top of the slab along the top of the beam but here it is not for the timing let us use it because uh, uh, for this exercise it's not going to affect much but in the design of course it affects keep that in mind now once the meshing is done we have to define the boundary conditions and at the bottom all columns are fixed that's the assumption we have at the foundation level so what we do we select all the nodes at the foundation level and uh, then uh, for them we define the full fixity at the bottom you can see they are selected and uh, we'll fix them so we apply full fixity at the bottom and you can see this uh, here it shows the boundary condition is applied at the bottom of each column now you can again change the boundary condition according to your need but keep in mind that uh, it should not compromise with the stability of the structure right so with that boundary condition now our complete modeling is done so what we will do is we will go for model analysis and for that we select the option and we have to select how many modes we are going to extract because uh, the number of modes in a multi degree of freedom system if you recall our discussion earlier it is the number of degrees of freedom we have in the model but again in this case we have large number of degrees of freedom we are not going to extract all of all the modes because all of them are not going to participate so we will select first 15 modes and we'll extract first 15 modes from the um, mass and stiffness matrices that we have already developed using this finite element now once that is done let us solve So now you can see we have first 15 modes extracted and you can see their values. So first mode is 1.9926 radian per second. I'm sorry, this is in hertz. So the next one is 2.1775 and then 2.3272 uh, and it continues. So the final mode that is the 15th mode is... Uh, 22.159 radian sorry it is in hard so you can see the unit at the top yes here you can see the unit so it is in hards so now what we'll do we will uh, plot the mode shapes so we'll select the first mode and then we have to animate it and here is the option so you can see the first mode it is a lateral mode now we will select the second mode it is again a lateral mode but in the orthogonal direction then the third mode it is a torsional mode and it's simply because we have asymmetry in plan and that's the reason we have this torsional mode excited and the third mode in this case is a torsional mode then again we select the next mode fourth mode it is again the second lateral mode in uh, x direction if you recall the frame that we used um, and we uh, actually solve one thread of system and there if you recall the second mode you can easily correlate what you get here in the second mode then we select the next mode again it is a lateral mode but in the z direction so it is the second lateral mode in the z direction 
then again we select the next mode which is a torsional mode it is the second torsional mode and similarly if you select higher modes we can animate them and one by one we can plot them this is the third lateral mode in the x direction and in a similar way if we continue we can see the other modes so that uh, shows how we can model a structure a frame structure in ansys and then we can define the geometry boundary conditions material property and then how we do the meshing and then finally once we do that we can go for model analysis we can extract uh, model frequencies and mode shapes and uh, once that is done model analysis is done this uh, analysis tells you whether uh, all the boundary conditions uh, they are properly applied or not if you relax uh, the boundary conditions in such a way that it uh, affects the restraint in one particular direction say x direction you can do that you will see you will end up with zero values in uh, natural frequency along that direction that will um, show you uh, any rigid body mode and in fact uh, if you do that and if you identify the rigid body mode then again uh, check the boundary conditions normally in civil engineering structures we do not have any rigid body mode and uh, this analysis actually tells you whether the boundary conditions are properly applied or not so this problem completely demonstrate from the um, very definition of the geometry and then how to develop the complete model and do model analysis i hope this is clear and you can uh, follow this you can try with other um, architectural plan and then you can also uh, develop your own plan and just uh, develop the finite element model do a model analysis and study mode shapes and natural frequency so with that let us close here uh, we will continue our discussion in the next lecture we will use this model further to do time history analysis and that will be followed by response spectrum analysis what we earlier discussed in the um, theory classes thank you very much